Hello fellow mentors, good day and mabuhay sa inyong lahat. Welcome to the new normal report here in Consul TLE1. For today's episode, we discuss the brackish water aquaculture together with Joseph Shane and Ivy Faith. So let's get started. So let us first define what is meant by brackish water. Brackish water that has more salinity than the fresh water. However, uh -huh, as this is not just as much as sea water. Yet, just like in river mouth, um, it is result from mixing of a uh, sea water with a fresh water. Now, as you can see the table here, we have the table of water salinity, which is it is based on dissolved salts in parts per thousand. Now we have here the fresh water, which is less than 0.5 salinity. We have here the brackish water, which is a 0.5 to 30 parts per thousand. The last one we have the saline water, which is 30 to 50 parts per thousand. Now, this brackish water fish farming, it is a system of aquaculture that focuses on the production of quality of fin and shell fish that are found in the creeks, lagoons, as well as the estuaries. So we have here the three cultivable uh, brackish water fin fishes species. So we have here the gray millet, the milkfish and the pearl spot. Hi everyone, I'm I'm Faith Sejerera. Our topic today is all about the aquaculture in Philippines and we will also discuss of how the farmers culture the gray mullet or Mugal cephalus by its scientific name. Gray mullet has fast growth rate. Ibig sabihin, madali lang silang dumami and it, is a com and it is also comparatively large size if we compare it to bangus and other cultured fish. Farmer first culture the gray mullet in fry in fish farming. When you say fry in fish farming, those are free swimming fish undergo from first feeding or underdeveloped kind of fish. So sometimes referred as fingerlings or generally they are fishes of small size, not sexually mature. So supposed to be those baby fishes must not put on the pan immediately. After brief period of conditioning, the farmers can directly transfer it to a production pan. So if it transported long distance, it is advisable, advisable to them. After brief period of conditioning, the farmers can directly transfer it to production pans. So if it, if it transported long distance, it is advisable to them to condition for a day. One is the artificial propagation. It is the breeding of an animal by natural processes. But this time, we talk about the artificial one. Take note, gray mullets do not breed in confined waters or it is a waterway two miles from the sea. So when they lay eggs, rinse it with seawater so the fertilized one are transferred to incubators. The appearance of gray mullet when they grow is like milkfish or bangus but some farmers state that they are not incompatible kasi yung gray mullet, they are fast growth rate or madali nga silang dumami while bangus is not. So they are like collected around 400 grams in four months and estimated 200 grams in the end of the year. So, farmers like to culture gray millet kasi mas makakabenta sila at syempre, mas marami magproduce ang gray millet. Good morning, RMMCians! By the way, I am Joseph Shane R. Brock and I am going to discuss the brackish water aquaculture. So, when we say brackish water aquaculture, also known as a coastal aquaculture. It is a rapidly expanding farming activity and plays an important role in the overall fisheries development, effort in Bangladesh, marine and estuarine shrimp, fish and crabs are the form of products. In this morning, ating tatalakayin ang tamang pagpoproseso, pagpaparami at pagpapalaki ng milkfish or Kilala natin sa tawag na pambansang isda ng Pilipinas, ang bangus. Also, bangus or milkfish is one of the most ideal fin fishes for farming in coastal area. 
feed mostly in filamentous algae from the bottom of the pond. Milkfish are cultured in the large scales in countries like Indonesia, Philippines, and Taiwan in pans called tambak. In India, to the popularity of its farming is growing especially in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. So, ang unang proseso ay ang seed collection. Seeds are collected from natural sources. The main fry season is extend from March to June. These seeds are collected using scoop nets, deep nets, and hand nets. In, in story and lagoons, drag nets or sien nets may be used. Soon after collected, the seeds are conditioned by keeping a limited volume of clear water for a definite period. Seeds are transported into, into an containers with diluted seawater of 10 to 15 salinity and at a rate of about 140 liters. Then, the second is nursery rearing or breeding. Ito ay pamamaraan ng pagpaparami ng isda. Nurseries are funds for rearing the fry until they attain 5 to 6 centimeters in length. The area of nursery funds range from 500 to 5,000. At the nursery site, the fry are acclimatized to the sal salinity of the pan water. Then the next is ang paghanda or preparation of pan for stocking. The pans are drained and dried for about 10 to 15 days and later tailed and rocked. Lime is added 1,000 kg and water is let in. Pan water is fertilized with organic and inorganic fertilizer. Then, within 3 to 7 days, a complex of blue-green algae, ditom, bacteria, nematode worms develop at the bottom of the pan called lablab. This algal consortium is most vital for developing fries of milk fish. The threat of predatory fishes Crabs and the snakes can be screened from entering the pan using nets, erecting poles along the embankments, and crisscrossing with the string can discourage predatory birds. Then, the pan management. The production pans ranges from 0 0.5 to 3 hectares in area and are rectangular in shape with water depth ranging from 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 meters. Similar to those practices in nursery pan draining of the water, drying, telling, labeling, and ranking. Manuring of fans is always carried out. Usually green manure is used, such as leaves and twigs of mangrove plants, rice straw, copra rice bran, oil cakes, pig manure, chicken manure, etc. Beside organic manure, Inorganic fertilizer containing nitrates, phosphate, and potassium, such as superphosphate and triple superphosphates, urea, etc., may also be applied. Within two weeks, the algal peripyton complex love love developments at the pan bottom. Stocking in earthen pans follows only after the growth of love love. Then, usually fingerlings of 7 to 15 centimeters length are stocked at rate of 2,000 to 10,000 per hectare. And the farming and pens constructed in shallow natural creeks, swamps, lagoons, lakes, and bays ranging in depth from 1 to 3 meters. The bottom and pen culture sites should be of firm clay or mud so that the pools in post can be driven sufficiently deep to make them support the pen structure. Traditionally, pens are made up of wooden planks, split bamboo, etc. But in recent times, nets materials made of synthetic materials such as nylon, polyproline, polythene, etc. are used. 
So, a part of the vertical net barrier is buried inside the mud or ground with the aid of foot rope and small weights. And also at the upper level, floats are provided. Fingerlings stuck and usually feed upon the natural food and no artificial food is provided. Then, the last is harvesting. Milkfish or bangus has a higher growth rate in its first year in brackish water during which it grows to a marketable size of 30 to 45 centimeters long and 300 to 800 in weight. During harvesting, the pans is drained using pumps while in the case of pens, the lowest tidal period is the best time for harvest. If trenches were provided in culture pans, it would be easier to gather all the fish inside the trenches by draining the water and the capture and then capturing them. And usually, sea nets are operated for capturing farmed fish. The survival rates range from 80 to 95 percent, amounting to a production ranging from 5,000 to 1,000 kilograms per hectare in a pans and 250 to 500 kilograms per hectare in a pans. So, that would be all. Hope you learn. Good day and God bless. So, this is the Pearl Spot. In scientific name, we have the Atroplus. Uh, Okay, so in cultured for pearl spot in both brackish water and fresh water environments, though the growth process is slow, it is gradually processed or it is slow. At a high stocking density table size, the fish can be harvested in 9 to 12 months culture period. So in seed production, peak season of abundance could be from May to July and November to February. A simple method of seed collection is adopted taking advantage of the tendency of the fish to congregate in large numbers for feeding on epiphytic growth. So in this method, twigs or branches are kept to submerge in the water a week ahead of a day of collection. So juveniles congregation rather for feeding trap using an encircling net or trap. However, the Philippine Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources using the technique of environmental manipulation has successfully demonstrated the hatchery seed production of pearl spot. So for pond preparation, okay, before letting in water, the ponds are drained and lime is applied at the rate of 300 kg per hectare. In undrainable ponds, pesticides such as amoa oil cake may be used to eliminate the weed of fishes. After a time gap for at least 10 to 15 days for the neutralization of the residual effect of the pesticide, the water is let in through the screens in order to avoid the entry of uh, what we call unnecessary fishes. Uh, the pond is filled up onto the appropriate level for at least 1.2 meters and the cow dung applied at a rate of 1,500 kilogram per hectare for promoting plankton production. So for acclimation and stocking of breeders, the adult Atroplus or Prospat for the weight range for at least 50 to 125 grams, it's procured from the wild or cultured ponds stock at 5,000 per hectare. After one week of fertilization of the pond, disinfected by dipping in 1% commercial formalin and acclimatized. Additional breeders added from the second year onwards to compensate the natural mortality of breeders. The breeders' one stock will be normally viable for three years. 
So for provision of spawning surfaces, in the natural environment, the fish attaches its eggs to submerged substrate like stones, aquatic plants, and etc. As prepared pond may not have such a natural spawning surfaces, materials like palmyra leaves tied in bunches to fix a false coconut leaf, petioles or coconut husk, or pieces of asbestos sheets have to be provided in the ponds. Now, for feeding, the feeding of the breeders has to be initiated within 3 to 4 days after stocking ground nut of oil cake for at least 40% plus the rice bran for 45% plus the fish meal for, for at least a 15% another plus vitamins and minerals which is mixed together at 2.5 kg per 100 kg per feed. So, to supply daily, either it is a pellet, pelleted, or in a dough form as supplied in feeding trays to kept, at, to kept at the bottom of the pond. So the feeding trays should be examined daily and clean outside the pond. So you have here the quantity of feed can be reduced whenever leftover feed is present in the trays to avoid wasted or wastage and water pollution so the presence of hatchlings indicates that the pond is to be manured with a cow down for at least uh, for at a 500 kilogram per hectare for the production of plankton which forms the food for the hatchlings once the first spot grow it is suitable for culture in confined fresh and brackish water the culture of prospat is more economical under polyculture system, especially together with milkfish and gray mullet, than under monoculture. Uh, the fish can attain a marketable size of 120 to 150 grams over a period for 8 to 10 months. The growth rate is relatively slow and high stocking density with low input management can yield optimum production. Pearl spot it is a herbivorous fish and it is also a polyculture. Pearl spot farming could be adapted to any scale integrating with other occupations like poultry farming. The poultry droppings from a good manure for natural food production in the culture ponds. Breeding occurs within 30 to 40 days of introduction of the brooders. Harvesting is usually undertaken by draining the water from the ponds and operating a seine net, cast net, or a drag net for capturing the fish. This portion is brought to you by Dito Telecommunity Incorporated.